If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what are your creepy cryptid, creature, or entity encounters out there in the boonies? Mimics, entities, humanoids, not deer, dog man, etc., and the like. The story of the Skinwalker Ranch. The Shermans were elated when they found a 500-acre abandoned property for a small portion of its price. Without doing much research on the property and its creepy nickname, the family moved into their newly purchased ranch in 1994. But within the first few weeks at the ranch, they would understand why their property was fondly nicknamed the Skinwalker Ranch. An abnormally huge, bewitching wolf greeted the family on their very first day at the property, and this would turn out to be just the beginning. The family got a mild dose of peculiarity during the first couple of weeks at the ranch, after which Terry Sherman saw a strange flying mass on the property. After this sighting, things went from bad to worse. The family started seeing eerie large light orbs, and from these light words crawled out dark humanoid creatures. The darkness of these orbs forced the Shermans to sell their property. The property was bought by Robert, a billionaire obsessed with the paranormal. His crew of highly skeptical and reputed scientists would witness the property's paranormal side unfold right in front of their eyes, and these events would become the most trustworthy instance of paranormal activities. In my town, there's an old quarry that's filled with water due to some underground pockets, there's not much history about it that I could find online, but that's what I've heard. People have died there, even as recently as 2018, and there's a rumor of bodies being dumped there. It's one of the only places you can go here that isn't a sad, run-down park. There are lots of hiking trails, and people swim there even though you're not supposed to. One day, three of my friends and I went there. It was later at night, but as long as you're not going to the cliffs, you're left alone. We made an agreement to not go up the cliffs and just walk along the water. Almost immediately, we all started to hear what sounded like footsteps, twigs snapping, etc. We all assumed there was just an animal and kept our eyes and ears out. And then everyone was seeing stuff. One of my friends saw an all-black, oval-shaped circle with glowing blue eyes. Another saw an all-white face with glowing green eyes. And the last saw glowing white eyes. We went down a path that was never there before and wasn't there when we went again, not even two days later. At the end of the path were two all-white trees that crossed in an X-shape. I do mean all-white, not birch or any other tree you see around here. That's when the first friend started hearing whispers. She couldn't understand what it was saying, but it was only her who heard it. That's when we turned around and started the walk out of there. Me and another friend started to hear whistling, but it wasn't heard by the other two. It definitely wasn't windy, it had a certain tune to it. Think Negan from The Walking Dead. And as we got to the end of the trail, back onto the road we parked on, the other friend who heard the whistling told us all to run. We never saw a person, but according to him and the other person who turned around and saw it, it was taller than any human they've seen and skinnier than it should have been. It stopped at the edge of the road, where we started running. We have no idea what it was. None of us have found any record of anything similar online. The friends who saw it are sure they're lizard men, which is the most popular cryptography in our state. I'm not too sure, though. So this happened about a year ago. I was on the ranch with one of my friends. Our parents were out as they were shopping for a month worth of groceries and a new bull, so they were gone for two days. My friend and I had a few beers and were discussing hunting stories. It was about 1 a.m. when we heard what sounded like someone trying to break into the house. We looked through the window, and it was a deer, so we each grabbed a gun. I took the 300, and he took the 270. I opened the door and was getting ready for a shot when the deer opened its mouth and had the teeth of what looked like a carnivore. Halfway through pissing my pants, I took a step back, and my friend shut the door. I asked, did you see that? He nods in shock. I open the window and fire bam. Half of its face was missing, but it just stood there, staring at me. I load another one and shoot again, this time in the neck, and the deer starts to walk away. Any hunter knows that a 300 dot wind mag is no joke, so the fact that it was walking was what scared me. We slept that night with the guns in our room. The next morning, we decide to track it because my dad would has given me shit for wasting an animal like that. But we are still having the guns, so we follow the tracks, and it's normal for about half a mile, then the blood stops, but there are still tracks. We walk for another mile, and there are no longer four hooves in the dirt but only two, as if it started to walk on two legs. My friend and I are shitting bricks, but we keep on following it. Eventually, it leads to a cave where the opening is so big that only a small child can fit in there. On the inside, we saw two glowing eyes. At that point, we looked at each other and booked it back to the ranch. We didn't tell our parents, and when they asked about the two empty bullet casings, we said we shot at a deer but missed.
To this day, I still wonder if we actually saw what we saw. It was around 5.30, the sun was still out, and it still wasn't dark. My dad and brother were going to run an errand, and I thought it would be funny to scare them, so I decided that after they pulled out of the driveway, I would run behind the car. I know this wasn't scary, but I thought it would be funny, and I was really bored, so I chased the car until they reached the stop sign, which was right around the corner of my house. Then I decided to turn around and walk back to my house. At this point, the car was out of sight, so I decided to start walking back home. When I did, I was not paying attention to what was ahead of me, I was just looking at my shoes and the pavement of the sidewalk. Then, when I looked up, I saw a strange figure. It had a weird shape, like if it had two heads, one on its back. The creature seemed to have a hunchback and looked unhuman. It stood there with an eerie calmness, and with no face or emotion, it just stood there with a blank expression facing me. It was under a light post that was turned on, and it was suddenly dark. I got a feeling in my gut that something was not right. My instincts kicked in and told me to run. After that experience, I have never seen that thing again. I live in a small country town in Australia. To paint a picture, the town I live in is set out on giant hills surrounded by a lake and bushland, for which you will need to cross a bridge that runs parallel to the lake and the giant coal mine power station that our town is renowned for. It was a Sunday night around 8 p.m., and I had just finished work at a fish and chip shop a town over from mine. As it was summer, it was still light outside, and it wouldn't get dark until 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. I got in my car and was driving home. As I started coming down towards the four lanes next to the power station towards my town, I saw a shadow up ahead on the right running fast along the wire fence of the power station car park. I immediately slowed down because wild animals like kangaroos have a tendency to run out in front of your car. But this thing kind of looked like a dog. At first, I thought, what is a dog doing all the way out here? Then, as it came closer, it was running on all fours, kind of like a gallop straight towards my car. Then it diagonally leaps, crossing the two lanes leading out of town and onto the two lanes in front of me. I could now see this thing clearly. It wasn't a dog, it was so much bigger than a dog. This creature had the exact face and head shape of a dog but no fur instead. It was like extremely pale human skin. This thing was so close to my car that I could see its giant blue veins down its body to its long tail, as well as every joint moving in its legs as it ran. It then went across the road in front of me and leapt over the guard rail on the left of my car like it was nothing. It's like time just stopped. All I could hear was the blood pumping through my heart and into my head. I left thinking, what the hell was that thing? I didn't realize my car was at a complete stop in the middle of the road, and then my body just woke back up like a jolt of this overwhelming dread of pure fear. My blood felt like ice. I immediately locked my doors and slammed my foot down, speeding home. When I got home, I was so shaken up and trembling when I told my family that the only way I could fully explain exactly what it looked like was that we were wolves from Harry Potter. But my father just laughed at me and joked if I had been smoking drugs. No one to this day believes me, nor have I heard of anyone else seeing it. Even though this happened years ago, it still terrifies me to walk my dogs down there to the lake on my own. I live with my husband and two teens in a cul-de-sac that borders the woods. We all love spending time in our yard and enjoying nature. On two occasions now, my kids have told me about some eerie experiences they've had. My kids recently got a trampoline and love to be on it, even at night. Recently, they heard whistling and conversations from the woods around 10 p.m. Now I can assure you, nobody goes down there, wooded embankment too, except in hunting season. This really freaked them out, and they came in and told me right away. I should mention that we have a cat that escapes sometimes, and we end up in the yard looking for and calling her name. Another time, my son was out around dusk looking for the cat near the border of the woods. He was by himself, and his sister was inside. He said he heard his sister calling his name from the woods twice and then giggling. This was very unsettling, to say the least. I want to have cameras for the yard. I'm not sure what's going on. Any ideas? So I moved to East Tennessee about two years ago, and the state is absolutely gorgeous. Waking up every morning to a beautiful sunrise, going to sleep, and actually being able to see the stars is great, since I lived in a city before I came here. Anyway, ever since I moved here with my now husband, I've been having some odd encounters or experiences with something here. I'm not really sure what it is, but here's a basic rundown of what it does. It scratches and knocks at the back door, closest to the woods, mimics voices, freaks our cat out to the point where he doesn't act like himself, scratches on the wall closest to our bed, thumps on the floor, and gives us terrible nightmares. We live in his childhood home, 
and he said that he's been dealing with this thing for a while now and to be very careful if I were to go up into the ridge by myself. I've been up there a few times, and every time I did, I got a very uneasy feeling, like eyes on the back of your head or a predator watching you closely. I think I was closest to it when we had to bury a few baby rabbits of ours that had passed away. It was dark and starting to rain, but I didn't want to just throw them into the woods since I hand fed them and had a bond with them. Me and my husband were close to the tree line when I heard something pacing back and forth in it. I couldn't see it, but the leaves rustling and the presence alone told me what it was. I was spooked, but I kept digging since I wasn't just going to leave them in a shallow grave. Whatever it was never popped out, but it sat pacing the whole time. No growls or anything, just movement. Any ideas on what it could be? I don't think it's a skinwalker or wendigo, but maybe a demon? Anyone else have encounters with a being like this? Last year, I was backpacking deep in the mountains in Montana. I was near Libby, Montana, about three hours west of Glacier National Park. I was hiking alone and expected to encounter bears, grizzlies, moose, etc. I'm experienced and know how to handle them, so I wasn't scared. But this time, I was way out in the middle of nowhere with nobody around for miles. Also, there was no cell service anywhere, and I did not have my emergency beacon with me. Usually, I expect to see other hikers on the trail, but not here. Nope. I was out there completely alone, and I knew it. Well, it was like 9 miles to my camp at Upper Cedar Lake. About halfway, the trail opened up, and I was in a somewhat clear area and had better visibility of what was around me. There were still trees and green undergrowth covering the ground. A few minutes later, I see something quickly scurry across the trail, maybe 50 feet in front of me. I stopped, froze, and waited. The creature noticed me and then stood up in the undergrowth, still almost completely covered by the tall grass and shrubs. It was about 3 feet tall, pitch black, 50 to 60 pounds, and obviously very quick and intelligent. I assumed it was a baby black bear at first, so I did not move or make any sound, and I got my bear spray ready, fully expecting an angry mama bear to come roaring out of the trees at me. But, thankfully, that did not happen, because I surely would have been attacked or at least bluff charged at. All I could see was its face through the tall grass. The creature stared at me invasively for about 30 seconds. I was staring back at it. It did not move a muscle. Then, suddenly, it huffed loudly at me and then ran through the grass up the side of the hill, and I never saw it again. The sound it made was a lot deeper than you would expect from something that small. It was like a bear's growl. You could almost feel it inside your chest. Very unsettling. I stood there silently and waited for another few minutes to see if Mama Bear was nearby, and that was indeed a cub, but nothing came. I gingerly passed through that area on the trail and kept hiking. My research tells me it may have been an otter or a mink, but I've seen them before, and this wasn't like any mammal I've seen before. It was the way it moved. I only saw it for a second, but it almost slithered on the ground like a reptile and then stood up on its hind legs and watched me, making me really uncomfortable. There was something sinister about it. I checked for tracks but couldn't find any. I have no idea what it was. I heard this story about two years ago from my sister's friend. One night, she was walking her dog near their house around 11 p.m. said house was in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, and it was reasonably dark outside. While out there, she sees a man, or something, as she said it, across the road. She said he was probably about six feet tall. He was making strange noises that sounded like heavy breathing, but they were extremely loud. Suddenly, he stops walking and looks directly at her. The next thing she knew, he started to crouch down and sprint directly towards her. She ran back to her house and told her sister, the only other person home at the time, everything. As her sister was calling the cops, they looked through the windows, and the man was nowhere to be found. Cops said they couldn't do anything because he didn't appear to still be out there. If that wasn't creepy enough, about a week later, my dad caught a very large, completely black coyote on his trail cam in the same woods. I couldn't help but let my mind wonder if the two incidents could be related, as the man making noises and crouching down before disappearing into the night sounds awfully like something a werewolf type of creature might do. On April 11, 2012, I received a call from the man who, along with his girlfriend, had a frightening encounter with a strange creature on November 20, 2011, outside of Troy in Bradford County, Pennsylvania. The fellow told me that what they saw scared the hell out of us. I was able to interview the woman involved on April 26, 2012. After conducting extensive interviews with the driver and his girlfriend, I learned the following details. At about 11.05 p.m. that evening, they were driving onto Mud Creek Road, traveling west towards Highway 14 near Troy. As they continued down the dark road, their attention was drawn to the left side of the roadway. 
The man, who was the driver, saw some movement and mentioned it to his friend. The woman initially thought that a naked man was crawling on the side of the road. The driver decreased his speed, swerved his truck in the middle of the road, and directed the high beams of his headlights towards the subject. The driver stopped about 30 to 40 feet away. They soon realized that this was not a person, but instead a creature that was crawling very low to the ground. As they watched, the creature moved into a squatting position with its back completely straight, somewhat like the stance of a kangaroo. The arms of the creature were held tightly to its body. What looked like long claws that resembled the talons of an eagle were easily visible. The claws were estimated to be about 8 to 10 inches in length. One claw was shorter than the other three. The creature had a muscular body. The head of the beast appeared to be oversized and shaped like that of a wolf. At the top of its head were two pointed bat-like ears that looked to be about 4 to 6 inches long. The entire creature, according to the man, was covered with dull, wrinkly, dark black skin. The man described seeing large canine-like teeth in its mouth. The eyes of the creature were about the size of a silver dollar and were shiny black. The man stated that even though he had his high beams directed at the creature, the eyes did not reflect at all. The man said he looked over the body during the 12-second encounter and, for some reason, thought the creature should have wings, but none were apparent. In the squatted position, the creature seemed to be about 5 feet tall. At this point, the creature was in the left lane of the road and about 1 to 2 feet onto the pavement. As the couple watched in amazement, the creature began to stretch its body. The man said that at this point, the animal started to stand up on its back legs while also falling over onto its front feet. The driver said that in this position, the creature seemed to be about 6 to 7 feet tall. The animal then fell over on all four legs. The witnesses observed that the front claws of the creature were now 2 feet across the center line of the highway, while the back feet remained 1 and a half feet from the edge of the road. The creature then turned its head to the right and looked towards the vehicle. The driver told me that it looked directly at them with a horrific expression, like it was panicked. The fellow saw it and took a deep breath. He had the feeling that the creature didn't realize that it was being observed, and when it realized it was, it was like it was caught doing something. Once it realized it was being observed, it leaned back slightly and then reached forward with its claws. The creature then took one tremendous leap, cleared a seven-foot embankment, and moved out of sight into a wooded area. The man estimated that leap was about 40 feet long. As it was in the process of leaping, it was perfectly straight and held its front claws forward. The legs, as it was leaping, were only slightly larger than broomsticks or about the size of a walking crane and were very long. Then, just a second after the creature was gone from sight, something else had occurred. A large bird, possibly an owl, suddenly rushed at the passenger side window, almost hitting the glass, then took off and did not return. It happened so fast that they were unsure if it was an owl or not. The witnesses indicated that this creature appeared to be changing form. The driver said, its shape was nothing like when it was squatted. The woman stated to me that it shaped into another form. She thought it was a dark brown color and looked like a werewolf with a little back hair. She estimated that when it was leaping into the woods, she thought it stood about 9 feet tall. The woman, while reluctant to say it, said, I think it was a man changing into a werewolf. The man, after the experience, went on to the internet to try to figure out what he saw and told me that the closest way he could describe the creature would be a gargoyle with no wings. The man commented, I will never forget what we saw that night. Oklahoma City A man says he was startled by a reptilian bipedal creature on an Oklahoma road. The man, a 63-year-old Oklahoma City dispatcher who asked to remain anonymous, told Cryptozoology News he was driving to work in the early morning when he encountered the purported creature. I was driving east on SW 29th Street at 4.30 a.m. on a Saturday. There was a full moon. I usually don't work on Saturdays, but this Saturday we were having the driver's safety meeting, so I was on my way in, taking my time, and only doing 35 miles per hour, he reported about the December 6, 2015 encounter. I was coming off a two-lane to a four-lane. On my side of the road, there was a culvert. It jumped up on the side of the road, standing on the curb, looking at me. The dispatcher, who claims the humanoid stood there for about 60 seconds and provided cryptozoology news with a detailed sketch, described it as a three-foot-tall humanoid with lizard skin. Its color, he says, was cream and iridescent. It had large eyes and small pointed ears. Its eyes were orange with no glow when the headlights hit them. It had a small mouth and a nose similar to a cat. It had three toes curled over the edge of the curb with heels like a human. Extremely large thighs that matched the base of its tail. Its tail was extremely long, with the huge base tapering down to no bigger than a matchstick, he recalls. The man added that the creature was flicking its tail, standing like an angry cat. 
but once it was on the move, it carried it straight out behind him. He explains that the being seemed extremely intelligent, and it felt as though it was watching him and thinking. As if it were calculating where it could make it across in front of me without getting hit. It made it to the center yellow line, then looked at me again before sprinting off into the woods on the opposite side of the road. The eyewitness said that he had been traveling the same road for seven years and had never encountered anything like it. This creature looked like something that belonged in the movie Avatar. Something I will likely never forget, he said. In 2002, a girl in Virginia claimed to have seen a similar creature while camping at Yogi Bear's Jellystone Park in Page County. She stated that the animal looked like the mix of a horse and a Komodo dragon with a dark gray-brown color. In December 2014, a former Marine and his wife also reported seeing one in Cincinnati, Ohio. Some paranormal researchers believe in the existence of a race of snake-like underground creatures. Proponents of the reptilian theory, such as David Icke, suggest a conspiracy involving these humanoids taking over planet Earth. According to Ica, these creatures are meticulously involved in daily political decisions affecting governments across the world, as they also believe that they are capable of morphing or shapeshifting at will in order to deceive the population. I want to know your thoughts about this experience I encountered a couple of months ago. I came downstairs in the morning to let my dog out for a pee, and when I came back into the house, both myself and the dog saw a golden-like creature moving into the landing. At first, I thought it could be my girlfriend, but then again, That'd be odd considering it was around 6.30 am so I went up the stairs, and she was still asleep? Obviously, I was perplexed by this, I didn't feel threatened or anything and ultimately thought little about it, that was until a week later. Unannounced, my brother-in-law told me he had encountered something weird on the same morning, which sounded exactly like my experience. Neither of us had said anything to one another, and we were completely curved by this? Any thoughts? I just wanted to share this, as I'm left a tad dumbfounded? A man and his son may have had a close encounter with a cryptid similar to the Mothman in their Greeley, Colorado, home earlier this year. Mr. Brown, 73, was helping his son clean out the attic and had just finished climbing the ladder when he realized something was watching him. His initial thought was that it was just a rat, but when he got a clear line of sight to the creature, he realized it was a tall, dark figure. Startled, he swung the flashlight he was holding in the direction of the invader and heard a sound similar to chattering teeth. However, Mr. Brown reported that the creature backed away from the light with what sounded like human footsteps. When Mr. Brown's son, a 42-year-old landscaper, joined him in the attic, he initially thought his dad was joking with him until he realized that the shadow he saw in the corner of the room was not a coat, a sheet, or anything else man-made. They reported the shadowy creature moved from a crouched position to its full height, which was around 7 feet, and ran through the wall, disappearing. When the Browns examined the spot the creature had vanished through, they discovered the wall had a big hole in it, and the creature had gone through an area where the wall was shallow. There was a tunnel behind the hole that went down into the house. Both men described the creature as having more fingers on its hands than a normal person, and each finger had claws. When the light did catch its face momentarily, the mouth was small with tiny, sharp teeth like a piranha. Its eyes were completely dark with no pupils, and it had smooth, dark skin. Brown Jr. said it reminded him of something from the Mothman film. Many people may have seen the film made around the original Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, based on the 1975 John Keel book The Mothman Prophecies. In the book, Keel claimed that a range of events that took place around the area at the time, including the collapse of the Silver Bridge, were all connected to the creature. The original sightings date from 1966, when the creature was seen by gravediggers. Later, the creature was sighted again by two young couples passing the former World War II munitions site near Point Pleasant. They described it as having glowing red eyes and looking like a man with 10-foot wings. More sightings followed, including two from a volunteer fireman, who similarly described it as a large bird with red eyes. Local authorities tried to blame the sightings on a range of large birds, such as a sandhill crane or an oddly large heron, but no evidence of these birds was found. Later reports indicated around 100 sightings in the years 1966-67, though many were kept private at the time. The sightings were later seen as a herald of the coming disaster at the Silver Bridge, where 46 people died in December 1967. At 7.15 p.m. on September 12, 1952, three little boys witnessed a bright object cross the sky. The object came to rest on land belonging to a local farmer. Once they saw the thing land, the boys went to one of their mom's houses, where they reported seeing a UFO crash land in the hills. From there, the boys and a group of locals went to the farm to try to find whatever it was that the boys had seen. 
one of the local dogs ran ahead out of sight and started barking, and moments later it ran back to the group with its tail between its legs. After traveling about one quarter of a mile, the group reached the top of a hill, where they reportedly saw a large, pulsating ball of fire about 50 feet away. They also saw and smelled a mist that made their eyes and noses burn. A farmer then noticed two small lights over to the left of the object and directed his flashlight towards them, revealing the creature, which was reported to have emitted a shrill hissing noise before gliding towards them, changing direction, and then heading off towards the red light. At this point, the group fled in panic. Upon returning home, the mother contacted the local sheriff and a news reporter. The reporter conducted a number of interviews and returned to the site with the farmer later that night, where he reported that there was a sickening, burnt, metallic odor still prevailing. The sheriff and his deputy searched the area separately but found no trace of the encounter. Early the next morning, the reporter visited the site of the encounter for the second time and discovered two tracks in the mud, as well as traces of a thick black liquid. He immediately reported them as possible signs of a saucer landing, based on the premise that the area had not been subjected to traffic for at least a year. It was later revealed that the tracks were likely to have been those of a Chevrolet pickup truck driven by a local who had gone to the site to look for the creature some hours prior to Stewart's discovery. After the event, investigators associated with the civilian saucer investigation obtained a number of accounts from witnesses who claimed to have experienced a similar or related phenomenon. These accounts included the story of a mother and her 21-year-old daughter, who claimed to have encountered a creature with the same appearance and odor a week prior to the September 12th incident. The encounter reportedly affected the daughter so badly that she was confined to a hospital for three weeks. They also gathered a statement from the mother of the local farmer, in which she said that, at the approximate time of the crash, her house had been violently shaken and her radio had cut out for 45 minutes, and a report from the director of the local board of education in which he claimed to have seen a flying saucer taking off at 6.30 on the morning of September 13, the morning after the creature was sighted. The day after the Flatwoods incident, a couple taking a leisurely drive through the mountains of Frametown, West Virginia, at dusk were met with a similarly horrific experience. Their car came to a sudden stop and refused to start again. Shortly thereafter, a pungent sulfuric odor filled the air. The couple, circling the vehicle in hopes of spotting the culprit, spotted something far worse than they could have imagined. From the waist down, it was similar to the Flatwoods monster, but from the waist up, it was a reptilian humanoid. This creature, thought to be the same creature sighted in Flatwoods, is known as the Frametown monster. This may or may not be a cryptid sighting, but it is a rather strange and unusual encounter. It was the middle of summer. Heat lighting was flashing over the lake. Several friends and I were at this dude's beach house. It wasn't very late, maybe an hour or two after sunset. We all went outside onto the second story back deck to smoke. I was watching the lightning. The house was only a few hundred feet away from the shore. But the walk to the beach takes a minute because there is a grassy dune between it and the shore. So a couple of us noticed a light beam from a flashlight coming over the dune. It was scanning the grass, like they were walking around or possibly looking for something. Most people on the beach at night don't use lights. It's actually pretty bright all night on Lake Michigan after your eyes get used to it. The light sweeps by something in the grass, then it shines back onto it. What was illuminated was very strange. It appeared to be a naked guy crawling around on the grass. Although it had elongated arms and legs, it was moving, kind of fast, and crunched over. It only lasted a few seconds, long enough for all of us to see it. Then, after the thing ran off, the flashlight shined directly at us. It stayed pointing at us until it went out after a few seconds. Creepy. So we were all like, WTF was that? And asked each other what we had seen. We all saw a weird, stretched out, naked guy. I wanted to go down there. I wanted to see if we could find it. But no one would go, and they were creeped out and wanted to go back inside. I was very disappointed, but I wouldn't go alone. I still regret it. Sightings of a humanoid with a wolf-like head. Arkansas, a man in Cleburne County says he and his friend came across a humanoid with a wolf head. Technician Chris Branch told Cryptozoology News that his next-door neighbor was the one to actually see the creature back in February. The man specified a location, but it will remain undisclosed in this report due to privacy reasons. I have heard it moving around but haven't seen it. My buddy Dell one night could not sleep, it was around 2 a.m. He said he had a strange feeling and went to check on his horse, so he grabbed a flashlight, the 33-year-old said. Reportedly, as he approached the horse, everything seemed normal. However, he adds, when he pointed the flashlight at the edge of the woods, he noticed an unusual shape. It was sitting close to the ground, very still, but he couldn't make it until he got closer to it. 
So, at about 30 feet or so, he stopped and noticed it was moving, Branch explains. At first he thought it was a very big man wearing black and digging his fingers in the ground, but as he spoke to it with a very loud voice, this thing stopped what it was doing, looked at Dell, and made eye contact. He goes on to say that when his neighbor realized it was not a human being, fear came over him. He backed away from this thing. He knew it wasn't a bear or a dog, he was more of a bodybuilder with a wolf head. The man says everybody in the area thinks they are crazy or on drugs, but he has also heard the creature moving at night. I have heard it growl and seen claw marks in the trees around me. I know what I have heard, and Dell knows what he saw. This is no lie. The dogman is a cryptid reputed to live in the northwestern quadrant of Michigan's Lower Peninsula, although other sightings have been documented in other states. This unproven creature was first reportedly spotted in 1887 by two lumberjacks, who described it as having a human body and a dog's head. In the fall of 2016, a Canadian businessman told Cryptozoology News he had spotted a creature that looked like a wolf walking upright while driving through Wisconsin. Seven months earlier, a 13-year-old in Muskego, Wisconsin, allegedly had an encounter with a similar creature. In 2015, a group of three people in Michigan reportedly came across an unidentified dog-like creature in the woods of St. Clair County. I was tree planting near Smithers, B.C., about an hour and a half into the mountains on dirt roads. I tried my best to forget this incident even occurred, as I simply could not find a way to rationalize what happened. I don't care who believes me or not, by the way, but what happened is this. It was almost midnight, and I was trying to sleep in my tent. My tent was near a bunch of standing dead trees that would creak when the wind picked up. A very loud and distinct sound. On this particular night, it was dead silent and still. I started to hear sticks cracking and steps being taken that slowly got closer over the course of about 15 minutes. It was loud enough that I was certain there was a bear approaching my tent. It got so close that it had to be no further than 15 feet from my tent. Cracking sticks and padding around the forest floor. I decided to yell out very loudly. Silence. I was answered with nothing but deafening silence. There was no sound of the creature fleeing or doing anything at all. I sat in silence, too scared to move, trying to rationalize to no conclusion. About 20 minutes of dead silence later, I heard the eeriest, unnatural, and unexplainable noise. It was the exact same timbre and volume, and basically the same sound as the trees outside creaking. But instead of being a regular creak, it began and then held the exact same note of creak for a full 5 seconds or even longer. It was like an unnatural drone that was obviously not a tree creaking. There was not a hint of wind or any other trees creaking as per usual. I got barely any sleep, and the next day was tough, and I just had to forget about it. I didn't ever make the connection that skinwalkers are known to imitate sounds like that until a few weeks ago. This happened in July 2022. If anyone has had a similar experience or has any ideas of what this could have been, I'd love to hear. A giant flying creature was seen in West Virginia. The man was driving on a rural two-lane roadway outside of the town of Clendenin at about 8 a.m. when he had to step hard on his brakes to avoid hitting a giant flying creature in the middle of the road. The giant bird was only a few yards ahead of him and was feeding on roadkill. The witness, an avid hunter, was startled by the size of the creature, which stood at least four feet tall, with its head extending above the roof line of his vehicle. The bird was covered with very dark brown or black feathers. The head seemed dominant, but not overproportioned to its body. The neck seemed long and slightly crooked. The beak was very long and large, and the eyes were very dark. But the feature that stood out was the massive wingspan of the bird. The wingspan was easily as wide as the two-lane road. The witness stated, the wings were, as I can remember, as attached as the arms of a human. It had shoulders. It had a very muscular upper torso, and the wings were as if they were its arms. The wing tip stirred the dust and gravel on both sides of the roadway as it ran to become airborne. The witness later returned to the site and measured the distance across the road from edge to edge. It was 21 feet. The witness stated that he was in a slight state of shock as he watched the creature fly off. The witness later tried searching for and identifying this bird, but the closest creature he could find in a book was the drawing of a terratorn, an extinct bird. I saw an unidentified flying object, thing, or creature in my backyard last month, and I can't find any explanation as to what it could be. I was inside our house finishing up some work, but I could see my boyfriend and our dog in the backyard through the back door window. Suddenly, I hear our dog barking. As I glance up to observe what was unnerving her, I realize that it's something flying alongside the back of our 10-foot fence. Quickly, I open the back door and walk onto our patio. 
The creature was completely silent and looked like a straight, yellow slash gold line that was hovering 5 to 6 feet in the air and moving in a precise, straight formation. And let me tell you, this thing was fast. My dog is a greyhound mix and extremely agile, and even she couldn't keep up with it. It was a little less than a foot long and a centimeter or two thick. I couldn't tell if it was glowing or if it was just the combination of the glow from our backyard lights and its golden tone that gave off this illusion. Because it was flying and clearly much faster than my dog, it wasn't acting like it was trying to evade danger. I had the feeling that it was fairly intelligent. It was almost playing with my dog, like it was playing a game of tag. It flew back and forth four to five times in a straight line at about 20 to 30 miles per hour, I would say. My dog attempted to catch it, running as it moved to the opposite side of the fence, but once she started to catch up, it would start flying in the opposite direction without ever having to turn around. It flew in a smooth, unwavering manner. Like when you point a laser at the wall and move it back and forth to get your cat's attention. Obviously, I wanted to get this on video, or at least a picture, but I wanted to get a closer look because my mind needed an explanation. As I moved closer, it quickly flew over our fence, and I never saw it again. But I could hear the bustling of leaves around the side of our house. After I knew it was gone, I looked at my boyfriend, and his face said it all. I asked him what he saw to confirm that my mind wasn't simply playing tricks, his experience was the same as mine. We both have been looking for this thing every night since we saw it, but to no avail. We still have no idea what this unexplained creature could be. Has anyone else had an experience like mine? Or any explanation as to what it could be? If I'm unable to come up with an explanation, or even a plausible theory, regarding what I saw that night, I think it will bother me the rest of my life. An experience my family and I never found an explanation for. We live in rural Appalachia. This story happened back in the early 2000s, when I was a young child. My dog woke my mom up by barking. My dog was a skittish little poodle, and she got anxious very easily. My mom was trying to calm her down, but then all of a sudden, she started to hear what she heard, some sort of horrific and unexplainable noise coming from above. My dad woke up from the noise at this point, too, and ran to the door to see if he could see anything. By the time he got the door open, he could hear it about a fourth of a mile down the road. It went from right above to half a mile away in just a few seconds. The best way my parents could explain the noise was that it sounded almost like a woman screaming, but not quite. At one point, it got so loud that it hurt their ears, so they had to cover them. My dad is a very logical man, and he's very educated on wildlife. To this very day, he has no idea what this creature is. He knows what a panther sounds like, and he swears that it's not like this. I have my own ideas and theories on what this phenomenon could have been, but I want to share this story here to see what thoughts and theories people have or if anyone else has experienced this before. The oddest part about it all is that I'm the only one who never woke up, even between my dog barking and the loud screaming noise. I was roughly 5 or 6 years old at the time. My dad built our house alone over the course of a few years. He bought some property that was practically completely forest, so there was a lot of stuff to be cut out or covered up with rock. After he finished building it, I got to choose my room since I was the first, and I chose one with a view over the ocean. This was bad, though, for one reason, throughout the year, the sun would shine into my room, heating it up hotter than anywhere in the house. This is important because it led to my encountering this thing. We moved in early in the summer that year, and it was an abnormally hot summer that year. The sun shining in all day didn't help either, so I decided to sleep with my windows open, which I didn't do a whole lot of. I fell asleep somewhat early in the evening and didn't really dream much. Then I woke up around 1 or 2 am I didn't really know why, since I can be a really deep sleeper most nights, but then I noticed something weird, you see, I have a plug in my wall that glows with a green and red light somewhat brightly, but that night I couldn't really see it. Even without my contacts or glasses, I could still tell something was wrong. I couldn't see the light at all, except for the ceiling. Then I realized why, there was something in my room. As my eyes adjusted and I squinted, I could tell this thing was huge. It was stooped over, almost bent in half, and was definitely humanoid. From the way the light shone around it, I could see it was at least semi-humanoid because it had super long legs and arms. Its legs, from what I could tell, were up against its chest almost like a fetal position, and its arms were at least as long as my bed. I couldn't see any other details at the moment, though there is one detail later that really freaks me out. At first, I tried to think about this rationally. I must be dreaming. So I tried a trick that always helps me find out if I'm dreaming or not, which is trying to shove my thumb through my palm. If I'm dreaming, there's little to no resistance, but nothing happened this time, so I wasn't dreaming. 
and I wasn't paralyzed because I could still move, so it wasn't a hallucination or sleep paralysis demon either. And finally, my room was still bare, so there was no way it could be a jacket or blanket or something. This was real. I didn't move for nearly an hour, I was so terrified. I was worried that this thing would kill me or something worse. It would occasionally twitch or move its head once in a while, but other than that, it just looked at me. Eventually my eyes became well adjusted so I could see a little better, and though I couldn't see many new details, I did see one thing that freaked me out a lot, its eyes. I couldn't see too much, but I could tell that they were super reflective and, as far as I can tell, yellow like owls. Eventually, though, I knew I needed to do something. I didn't have a phone at this point, I was 13, but I had a clock that had a light up display that could brighten up my room quite a bit. I decided to start moving towards it a little, but I was about halfway to reaching out to the button that turned on the display when the thing finally moved. I swear, this thing stuck its hands out of a window and literally unfolded itself out of my window. It closed the window behind it, and I could hear it climb onto the roof and jump off into the woods. My parents came in the next morning to find me curled up in a ball on my bed, completely sleep deprived, and staring at a single closed window out of a few. Ever since then, even eight years later, and even if it's hot as all get out, I cannot and will not sleep with any windows open. To this day, I still don't know what that thing was. It wasn't anything like Bigfoot, and it wasn't the Kushtika either, since they don't look like that thing. I have two theories, it was either a creature that lived in the woods or something and made my room's nest before I moved in, or it was some sort of dark spirit that attached itself to me. Either way, this was an actual encounter I had, and I just felt like sharing. Feel free to give me ideas for what this thing could be, since I have no clue. This was some time ago, earlier this summer, around June or so. I was sitting in the drive through at in and out at around 10.30 pm, and I had just finished ordering. I was turning down the drive through to head to the window when I saw this gaunt, pale shoulder and arm just visible behind this bush behind the chain link fence. I know for a fact it wasn't a deer or other wild animal, and I also know it couldn't have been like a homeless person because nobody can really get down to the area I saw without being caught, falling, or something, certainly not someone as skinny and gaunt as what I saw. When I straightened out in the drive through I kept turning around to try and look at it because my headlights only illuminated it for that small moment. I couldn't see anything from my new angle, and every day, day or night, I can't see anything there that might have been mistaken, like a rock, a tree branch, or even trash. When I told my friends that same night, one suggested it might have been a skinwalker, and I shuddered to think something that creepy was within jumping distance of me and my car. So I'm convinced I saw a skinwalker, thanks to my friend. I really hope I'm wrong because of how close the store is to my house. My friend has had something odd happen to him for the past three nights, he's part native and has heard a bit about skiing walkers and such. He told me a few nights ago that he thinks he ducked up and proceeded to explain an incident in his childhood where he encountered something. He saw it while out on his cousin's farm in Texas seven or eight years ago and recently brought it up in a conversation with someone at work. A few days after this conversation, he was out having a smoke when he locked eyes with what he thought was a coyote, it didn't fully fit the look of one. Its eyes seemed unnatural, not like normal coyote eyes, they seemed more human. It was missing patches of fur and seemed to be arched a bit, its back legs were higher than its front, its arms were gaunt and just seemed off. After first passing it off as a coyote with rabies or mange, since he lives in southern North Carolina, where a lot of coyotes are active, he went about his business and gave the animal some space. During the day, however, he began remembering seeing something similar in Texas and remembering his Native American side being very hush-hush about it afterwards. Things escalated last night when he was in his room at about 2.30 to 3 in the morning getting ready for bed when he heard several loud footfalls on his roof, very heavy and very fast, then the clanging of the metal roof over his screen porch. What set him into a panic was the fact that there were clear skies outside that night, and when the animal hit the fence of his house, it let out an almost sharp yelp of pain, and the sound is what scared him. It didn't sound like a fox or a bobcat, it sounded more like a whale, almost human but inhuman. He had heard the scream before. In Texas. Is it a skinwalker, or possibly some other entity? When I was about 10, I had finished getting ready for school, and it was already 6 in the morning, and my mother had to drop off four kids, including me. I'm the youngest, with two older sisters and one brother. We lived in an apartment complex, so we lived upstairs, and my sister and I went downstairs to wait for the others. It was obviously still dark out, and some of the lights outside were lit, and I want to make this clear, I wasn't the only one that saw this my sister also saw it. I remember looking at her face and then turning my head to the left to see a pitch black figure. A huge one that was the size of the houses, each building had four homes, 
two upstairs and two downstairs. This thing was sideways, and I remember looking at the feet. The feet looked like bats with them dangling, but what was confusing to me was that it wasn't flying. We didn't hear wings flapping because of how big that thing was, but it was just floating sideways and slowly turning a corner to one of the houses. I was being too curious about what that was at the time, so I started walking and then running towards it because it had almost fully gone to the other side of the house, and my sister had stopped me from going any further. I honestly thank her for that because I'm not even sure what would have happened if I did reach for it, but then, as soon as it had fully disappeared, the rest of my family had walked down the stairs, and my sister and I were rambling and freaking out to our mother. I don't remember much of her reaction, but I remember running the same way as the creature had gone, only to find it completely gone because, in that direction, the parking lot was only up ahead, so we had to go that way anyway to leave. What did my sister and I witness? For some background, I've experienced other odd things in my house and elsewhere that led me to answer the question, do you believe in ghosts? With I've seen too much weird shit to not believe in something. I've only seen this particular thing in my house, and I usually only see it out of the corner of my eye. It looks like a small white dog creature, and I do own a small white dog, but when I see it, I know it is not my dog. Compared to my actual dog, this thing is perfectly white, its fur is longer and wispy in texture, the tail is longer as well, with the fur almost trailing behind it, its body is slimmer, kind of an athletic build, and it moves differently, more gracefully. My dog is also restricted to the kitchen of the house, and I see this thing anywhere in the building. It isn't startling to see, it doesn't frighten me or anything, it's just there. A friend of mine has seen it as well, he was standing in our kitchen and saw it in our living room, only to look out the window and see my actual dog out in the yard. The oddest occurrence of it took place on the second floor of the house, where my upstairs bathroom opens at the end of the hallway. I opened the bathroom door to see it sitting in the middle of the hallway. Normally, it disappears within a second or two and sticks to my peripheral vision, but this time it was right in front of me and stayed long enough to turn its head towards me. I had only barely seen enough of its head before then to know it had a longer snout than my dog. When it looked at me, however, it almost didn't have a face. It's hard to explain, it's kind of blurred, but its eyes were pitch black, dark void black. It disappeared right afterwards, but I was left with the overwhelming feeling that I'd opened the door too quickly and just seen something I wasn't supposed to. Has anyone experienced something like this or can give some kind of explanation other than ghosts or spirits? 2015 I was in the southwest United States, camping in the desert. It was about 2 a.m., and I was still in the truck cab, eating pistachios and tossing the shells out of the open window. A huge full moon was behind me about 2 o'clock in the sky, and I was watching it in the rear view mirror. All at once, a tall being walked about 6 feet behind my truck and stopped. I turned around and looked out of the open back window. It was about 8 feet tall, very skinny, with long arms with elbows below its waist area, a foot-long skinny neck, and an oval head that had what looked like a 4-foot beard or tube hanging from its lower face. I couldn't make out the feet or hands. It was walking like it was struggling, like if you walk in a swimming pool with the resistance of the water. As it stopped, it barely moved its shoulders, but that freakishly long neck turned its big head at me. I don't know if it saw me in the truck. I froze. It turned its head forward and continued walking. It was bizarrely thin, like an insect. I got scared thinking it's so thin it's hungry. I took off after it passed by my truck, camping equipment in the back of my truck flying to the side of the dirt road as I drove. I went back four months later in the daylight. I found the pile of pistachio shells, so I knew exactly where I was. I saw nothing unusual. I drove around a bit, it was a nice day, and I found a place that looked like a good hiking spot. As I got out of the truck, maybe about three in the afternoon, I heard diesel engines struggling to dig, like back hose, earth movers, dump trucks dumping a load and banging the scooper to unload all the dirt, and trucks backing up with the beep, beep, sound, but there was nothing around. I was in the middle of nowhere on a dirt road, there were no other cars around for miles. I couldn't figure out where the digging noise was coming from but wondered. I got on my hands and knees and listed to the ground, it was coming from under the desert landscape. I was standing where the digging was coming from. As I stood up, I saw two very shiny white pickup trucks facing the front of my truck, with onyx black windows. They were so shiny that the sun reflecting on them hurt my eyes. Driving in the desert, piles of dust would be on a truck, these looked like they just came off a showroom. I got scared. I guess they saw me listening to the ground, and I suppose I wasn't supposed to hear that sound. As I got back in my truck, I saw two more white trucks exactly the same behind me, facing me. I drove off, looking to see if they were following me, they weren't. As I got to the nearest road, 
My heart sank as there were two more of the same trucks waiting for me at the intersection, facing each other, so whichever way I was going, one truck would be right behind me. As I got on the road, the truck behind me followed me right to my bumper. I was going 90 miles per hour, and the truck was right behind me. The other truck was then trying to pass me, and I was swerving two lanes to keep it from passing me. I came up to an exit to some buildings, decided to give it a shot, and exited. At the same time, the two trucks slowed down, made a U-turn, and went back. They could have taken me out in the desert and no one would have found me or my truck, but they didn't. Did they want to kill me on the road? I don't know, but I was terrified to go home, thinking they'd be there, but I never saw them again and never went back. In 2002, when I was 19, I had a close and personal encounter with a dark entity. My family lived in West Virginia and was up in the hollow, like most people in the state. Late one night, myself and three others decided to take a walk a bit further up the hollow in a long, large loop. The idea was to walk along the roads that circle around to the back of the family property, take a short trip through the woods behind my great uncle's house, and then down the driveway to my house. In order to reach his property line, we had to leave the old dirt road and cross through a cow field. I was in the lead because I typically walk through these fields and woods when hunting and would walk this route in the dark with no problems. It must be said that I regularly walk these woods, and before the night in question, I had never experienced anything at all, or after, mainly because I never walk that route after dark ever again. I would take the long way home to avoid that patch of forest. It was a cloudy, moonless night, and, as you guessed, dark. No, we did not have flashlights. When I approached the fence, there was nothing. However, when I grabbed the barbed wire to cross, there was an entity there waiting on the other side. I did not see it. I saw darkness and the first set of trees. It made itself known through a guttural growl. It was head level for me, 5 apostrophe 9. When it started to growl, it sounded like a mixture of a bear and the deep rumble of a large dog. It was directly in front of me in what felt like a space of about an inch. I froze. My senses were going crazy trying to figure out what I was standing in front of. Its breath was hot and smelled of rotting flesh, unfortunately, yes, I know what that smells like. Whatever it was, it was in my face, daring me to cross. I must say so too. With my eyes only, because I dared not move, I tried to find it. I saw the trees directly behind it, but not it. I knew that I was going to die. At that moment, I was terrified to the core. As abruptly as it made itself known, it was gone. It left without making a sound. I felt all of my hair stand on end, and my heart honestly must have missed a beat. I felt the chill of the air, I felt like I could breathe again, so I turned to look at those that were with me, and my worst fear was realized. This is real. It actually happened. Two of them were frozen in spot with horror-stricken faces, and the third was already running. Without another thought, I let go of the fence and ran past the two. I ran to the closest dust to dawn light, climbed up the apple tree next to it, and waited there until daylight. I did go back the next day, with a rifle and my buddy, to find nothing. No hair, no footprints, nothing. You could see where I was standing, but I never figured out what it was for sure. That was until last year, when I discovered the accounts of Ed and Lorraine Warren. They explained the many different haunts of demons. How they operate, and that is when it all clicked. I came face to face with a demon. Years after the incident, only one other family ever lived in the house, and that only lasted a couple weeks. According to my cousin, they packed everything up, moved out, and then called back to say they wouldn't be returning. This is something that happened to me and two friends about 14 to 16 months ago. We were hanging out at my camping spot when, behind us, further back on the trail we had come down, the dogs started acting strange. We were looking back, and they came out of the woods to our left and stood on the trail. The Great Pyrenees started growling really low and looking defensive. The coonhound is a goofball, but he was also acting disturbed about something. They were both looking back down the trail to the west. I immediately got quite a strange and serious feeling, it was a bit ominous. I've learned to trust my gut, which I recommend to anybody in the woods or around a person or animal that you feel instinctively is threatening. Anyway, I said to my friends, we better get back to the house. To get my point across, I sort of grimly added now. Well, we were heading west on the trail, and the dogs, if I remember correctly, had vacated the area. While walking, I looked back and saw my one friend, the wife, looking into the woods off the trail and staggering back a few steps. I and her husband asked her what was wrong. By the way, this is the area where the dogs had previously been growling. She said, I'll tell you when we get back, I don't want to scare D. He's kind of easily spooked, lol. So, we got back and asked what she saw. 
she tells us that she felt she needed to look off the trail, into the trees, and she saw something halfway behind a tree, looking at her. We all had headlamps on, she said it was pale or whitish, with an oval-shaped head. It looked like it was crouching, with long limbs. She kept stressing how skinny it was, particularly the limbs. She said it had a surprised look on its face, like it didn't expect us to be there. Myself and friends and relatives use the trails regularly, but not at night. She said that the thing was bobbing back and forth in kind of a creepy way, like moving its head behind the tree and then swaying its head and shoulders back rhythmically to look at her. She said it didn't appear to be aggressive at the moment, but it looked scary. I pulled up the famous trail cam picture of the rake, or whatever it is, and she got a shocked look on her face and nodded yes. However, she made it clear that it wasn't exactly the same. The next night, I was on the back porch and heard a freaky, very shrill scream come from the woods. I don't know if the two were related, but I've lived in the country for most of my life, and I've never heard anything like it. This is one of multiple things that have happened around here, but this is the only one that I know of involving this creature. This is in North Alabama. When I was about nine years old, I lived in an old house with my family. The house had undergone many renovations and alterations over the years, and due to this, the original front porch that was adjacent to my room had been walled closed, creating a really long corridor-like room that one had to walk through to reach my room. This was the only way for me to access the rest of the house from inside my room. For a while, one of my childhood friends lived with us and shared my room. It was during this time, for the duration of about a week, that I would wake up at night with the terrifying sounds of slow, heavy footsteps and deep guttural growling and breathing, moving up and down this front porch room outside my bedroom door. Being nine years old, I was way too terrified to get up and investigate, and whenever I woke my friend to ask her if she heard the noise, it seemed like it didn't really disturb or faze her. She would get annoyed with me for waking her and just go back to bed. I spent nights, wide awake, listening to this terrifying creature walk around outside my bedroom, with no way of reaching my parents' room without moving through the room that the sounds were coming from. Eventually I learned to sleep with my head under the pillow to drown out the noise, and the sound stopped happening. When I think about it, I still get chills down my spine and the very real feeling of petrifying fear curdles in my stomach. Many years later, I moved away to live at a boarding school for high school. The girls' dormitories were situated along the two long corridors of a three-story building, on the second and third floors. Nothing remarkable happened to me during this time, however, years later, I spoke to a friend who was my age and went to the same boarding school as me. Somehow the conversation turned to inexplicable paranormal experiences, and she proceeded to describe something that happened to her during her time at the boarding school. For the duration of about a week, something would walk up and down the corridor outside her bedroom on the second floor, situated in the middle of the corridor. She would hear guttural breathing, growling sounds, and slow, heavy footsteps. When she woke her roommates to ask if they'd heard the noise, it was like they were not disturbed, paid no heed, and just went back to sleep. When she tried to open her door to look outside, something started violently pulling on the door handle from the corridor side. Never before had I shared my childhood experience with this friend, and when she described what had happened to her, I felt like someone had dumped a bucket of ice over me, having had a very similar experience as a child. I proceeded to tell her about my own experience, and as you can imagine, we were both sufficiently freaked out at having discovered that we shared such an inexplicable experience. Years later, my youngest sister was sent to the same boarding school for the first year of high school. She had since moved to another school and finished her studies there. Recently, we were hanging out when the conversation turned to inexplicable paranormal experiences. I remembered the shared experience between me and my friend but opted not to talk about it since it was so scary and unbelievable and I didn't really want to freak my baby sister out. It was at this point that she started describing something that had happened to her during her time at boarding school. For a week or two, she would wake up and hear something walking around outside her bedroom door. There would be heavy, slow footsteps, and whatever it was made these deep, heavy, guttural breathing sounds. It would walk up and down the corridor throughout the night, and when she woke her roommates to alert them to the sound, they would pay it no mind and go back to sleep. When she described the experience, I went completely cold and felt completely sick. For the second time in my life, someone I knew had described the exact same experience to me that I had as a child, and this time it was my very own sibling. The craziest part is that she stayed in the exact same room that my friend stayed in when she had the experience. I have no way to even begin to make sense of this. I've searched online to no avail, and I've tried to see if there is anyone else out there who has experienced this. The closest thing that my searches have brought up is the term shadow people. So here I am, hoping to find some information, hoping to find others who have shared this experience or something similar who could help shed some light on what this could mean. 
One night last summer, I snuck down to my friend's house, who lives about a quarter mile away. I would text him and tell him I'm coming to my house because I did not have data to tell him when I got there. When I got there, he wasn't in his garage, where we normally hang out, so I went up to the house to get Wi-Fi. Now his room is in the basement, and he has a fire escape that leads outside to where we smoke. As I was texting him, I heard his voice clear as day say my name, and without even questioning if it was him or not, I replied, what? As I looked up, I saw a figure that looked like him, and I went over behind the house to meet him, but no one was there. Then I freaked the duck out and knocked on his window, and he was in there on his computer. At this point, I jumped into his window with goosebumps up and down my arms and on the verge of tears. But that wasn't the only time I'd bumped into what I believed to be skinwalkers. Not even a week after that incident, I was at his house in the garage with him, and my brother told me he would walk down and hang out. But my buddy got a text from my brother asking for him to pick him up instead of walking. I asked my friend when he thought my brother was going to show up because I was still under the impression that he was walking, and I heard my brother's voice call out my name in distress as if he were luring me out there, and that's when I found out he wasn't walking. My friend even heard it, I was seconds from walking into the dark to whatever was waiting for me. I felt like I was being targeted by what I assumed was a skinwalker. I live in Indiana. Could someone help me identify what I was encountering over the summer? When I was around 13, my cousin, 12, and I decided we were going to camp in our yard. We have a shared property that has been passed down through the family for generations. There are about 150 yards or so between our houses, and it is just an open area of yard that hits our fields. The total land area is around 2.5 square miles, so it's pretty big. We have fields, a creek, and even our own bit of forest. Anyways, we decided it was a nice summer night and we were going to camp out, so I grabbed the tent we had in my parents' garage, and we spent the evening setting it up and then going to his house for dinner. At around 9 p.m., we decided to go to sleep since it was getting pretty dark out and there wasn't really much we could do outside while in the tent except talk about our plans for summer. At around 11 p.m. or so, I got a call from my then-girlfriend, and she was pretty upset about something that had happened earlier in the day. I was pretty tired, so it took me a while to actually understand what she was saying and to calm her down, but once I did, we continued to chat for a bit until my cousin grabbed my shoulder hard. I told him I was on the phone and he could wait, but he just pulled me around, and when I saw his face, I instantly told my girlfriend I had to go. He had his finger up to his mouth in the shushing motion, and he looked absolutely terrified. He told me to look towards the entrance of the tent in a whisper before I could even ask him what was wrong. When I looked, I didn't see anything at all, so I just told him to go back to sleep, but after that, I heard the sound of someone walking around the tent. It seemed very unlikely that anyone would be out here unless it was my dad, and he isn't the type of person to prank anyone. We are generally pretty safe on our property, as we are about 10 miles out of town, and everyone that lives near us is family or old family friends. I told my cousin to be quiet and stay down, and I was going to see if I could find out who it was, but when I peeked out the front of the tent, I didn't see anything again. I assumed whoever it was just went off or that maybe it was my dad after all, but instead of pranking us, he had just decided to come just check on us. That was proven wrong, however, as I heard the footsteps walking around the tent again as soon as I laid down. It felt like hours I listened to the footsteps, sometimes they would change pace and rhythm, but after a while I heard them stop. I ended up looking at the entrance to the tent, as I had the feeling of being watched, and I finally saw what had freaked my cousin out so much. Standing there, peering into the tent, was what appeared to be a thin man who was very dirty and almost completely naked except for some animal skins that he wore. His eyes seemed to glow or shine, like an animal's eyes would if you shined a light in them, but there was nothing that should have made them glow like that. I lay there frozen as we peered into each other's eyes for what seemed like a lifetime, but was probably only around five minutes or so. At this point, he very calmly and slowly backed away, turned around, and ran off in the direction of our forest. I stayed awake, straining my ears for any sound indicating he was coming back, but after about an hour and a half, I had exhausted myself and fell asleep. When we woke up, we immediately looked around the tent to see if maybe we were just seeing things, but sure enough, there were bare prints circling the tent. While looking at the prints, I noticed that some of the tracks were coyote paw prints, which would have accounted for the change in rhythm. We ended up finding a set of tracks that led into our field towards our forest and noted that about halfway from the tent to the field, the prints started changing from the bare footprints to the man on all fours with footprints and hand prints, then slowly becoming smaller and turning into coyote paw prints. Ever since this experience, my cousin and I have both had multiple encounters with what we now believe is a skinwalker. I had never heard of one until a couple months ago, when I first heard the skinwalker story that inspired me to tell my story.
The description of what they called a skinwalker is what prompted me to look it up, and we now believe what we encountered was a skinwalker. I've experienced many odd and unexplainable events in my life, but this event has been on my mind for a few years now, and I finally decided to tell it. And I pray I'm not the only one who's experienced something like this, so let's start from the beginning. I graduated from high school in 2019 and was promoted to supervisor for a kitchen in a nursing home down the street. Since I oversaw dinner, I didn't start work until about 3.30 p.m. and would get home around 10 p.m. so for the first half of the day, I would be completely home alone. I enjoyed that time. Solitude was always nice, especially when you're as introverted as I am. Normally I would sleep in until about noon, but this time I decided to relax on the couch in our main living room and watch Kitchen Nightmares. I remembered nodding off and falling into a light sleep, so any small noise would wake me up. The first few times I cracked my eyes open, it would just be from the cats jumping on me, so when I felt the cushion by my feet dip a bit, I figured it was my cat Peach. After a moment, I opened my eyes and realized my younger sister was sitting at the end of the couch, her back to me. I was half asleep, so I really didn't think much of it, I figured she'd just stayed home from school sick. So I just asked her if she could move her head so I could see the TV, but she ignored me. Still facing the TV screen and annoyed, I asked her why she was home. Once again, she remained silent, coming to the conclusion that she was just being rude. Again, I closed my eyes and fell back asleep. After about another hour, I got up and started to get ready for work and noticed my sister wasn't in the room or in the house. Concerned, I called her. After trying to call her a few times and getting nothing, I called my mother. She picked up, and I asked her if sis had told her where she was going. My mother, confused, asked me what I was talking about. She dropped sis off at school before going to work, my sister had been at school this whole time. In shock, I hung up and kept this to myself, convinced I was losing my mind. It was all in my head, but I remember that moment so vividly. What my sister was wearing, how she was sitting, and how I felt a shift on the couch when she sat down. This wasn't a dream, this was real, it had to be. There was something in my house with me that morning, and it was not my sister. So this happened a few nights ago on Saturday, August 28, 2021, in British Columbia, Canada. I'm not entirely sure if what I encountered was a skinwalker, but here goes. I live in a small to medium-sized town, not a large city, in a suburban neighborhood that's situated close to the Fraser River. Everything around here is mostly wood, and there's also a large forest service road system a few blocks away that goes quite far into the bush. If you walk to the bush at the park across from my house and take a ride in the woods, there's a narrow trail that's quite overgrown that pops you out at the start of the hill down to the new development. About 100 meters away to the right of the hill is another park that connects to the forest service road system and endless bush. From the park across my house to the end of the meadow, it is about 1 to 1.5 kilometers in total. The meadow connects to a large gravel area across from a high school up a hill, which is where this begins. Alright, so here's what happened. This was all later at night, around 11.30 pm me and my girlfriend were in the gravel lot, in my SUV, across from the high school where we were talking, and she eventually fell asleep as we had been walking around all day and the fair was in town. About 15 minutes after she was asleep, I started to get an eerie feeling like I was being watched and had a feeling like we had overstayed our welcome. I didn't like it at all and always trust my gut when I get feelings like that, so I started to wake up my girlfriend. Just as she was starting to wake up, I heard what sounded like someone shouting, kind of like a hoo or ha, further down the hill into the meadow. I would have disregarded it, but it caught me off guard a bit since it sounded almost doubled, like the person had a chorus pedal or pitch shifter on their voice. It spooked me a bit because of that, and I hadn't heard anyone yell like that before. I finished waking up my girlfriend, and we drove away from there into an elementary school parking lot down the road from the hill leading to the new development. I told her what happened, and we joked about it being spooky and whatnot. I then looked up videos to try and find something that matched what I had heard, and skinwalker screams and vocalizations were what matched up most. Unfortunately, I scrolled into the comments, which mentioned that the further away the scream is, the closer it is to you. It spooked me for a moment, but I chalked it all up to coincidence. For fun, we decided to drive down the hill to the new development as it's dark and spooky, it is woods on one side where the park is and has a gravel turnaround for vehicles with a gate at the end where the gravel path starts. As we were going down the hill near the top, I got a very strange and uneasy feeling, almost like a slight panic, but it went away shortly after we got to the bottom of the hill. My girlfriend said she got the feeling as well, so we decided to turn around on a side street and leave. I decided to play some music that always helps take the scared feelings away from me, the Doom Eternal soundtrack, 
specifically Super Gore Nest, and put the pedal to the metal on the accelerator whilst going up the hill to make me feel more comfortable and like nothing could touch me. When we were about three quarters of the way up the hill, the feeling came back and hit us full force. The closer we got to the top, where the trail came out, the stronger it got. The only way I can describe it is pure terror. It wasn't fear or dread, it was terror. We both had a physical reaction to it. We got intense chills, and we could feel the goosebumps on our skin all over our body. We both started to get choked up and teary-eyed, and I became short of breath for a minute. I must have gone from 60 km per hour up the hill, the limit is 50, to 80 after cresting the hill, and it felt like if we stopped, we surely would have died. It was the most petrifying experience either of us has had, we didn't even see anything. I've driven past many animals at night, from deer to bears to coyotes, etc., and have been outside walking home alone at night with a bear going through garbage cans at my neighbor's houses. I've dirt biked past a mama bear with cubs and a mama moose, and I thought those were scary experiences. No scary experience I've had, from a car accident when I was young to almost being hit four times doing road construction by dumb drivers, can even come close to the feeling I had that night. The Doom soundtrack turned the feeling of being a badass into feeling like it would be the anthem of my death. It was truly the most terrifying experience of my life. After getting out of Dodge, we went to a well-lit mall parking lot and calmed down for a bit, still shaken. I drove my girlfriend home and had a very anxiety and fear-ridden drive home, as the park across from my house is only 150-ish meters away from where the encounter took place. When I got home, I made sure everything was locked up tight, had a little bit of weed to calm down, and then went to bed while on video call with my girlfriend. That night, around 3.30 to 3.45 a.m., I woke up and had a mild return of the panic feeling for around 5 minutes before falling back asleep. I dreamt of the experience the entire night. The next morning, my girlfriend told me she heard tapping on my window at around 3 a.m., which made me shudder as my window is around 9 feet off the ground. I don't know what to make of the experience and would appreciate some guidance into what this may have been. I've never liked walking in those woods alone, as I always get a creepy feeling, but I'm definitely not walking to my house alone at night ever again. We're going to go back and drive there at night again to see if it happens again. I'm not sure if that's a stupid idea, but my curiosity about cryptids and the like has peaked, and I need to know what's lurking around here. I'm part Native American and grew up looking into our folklore. I ended up fearing the woods, especially the ones facing my grandma's house. They always felt strange. One, one day, my cousin took me into the woods. We wanted to look for a cat with our neighbor. We walked until we came across a hole. Thorn bushes and vines made it quite hard to get in. It was pretty big, but it wasn't connected to any other water source. There were chairs, gold, and an old, scratched up picture. We tried to get in to take the picture, but we found it pretty much impossible. We went back home and told our family, but they never believed us. 2. A year or two later, my aunt took me into the woods. I was extremely bored and was bothering her. We walked for maybe 5 minutes, the more we walked, the more my head hurt. We kept walking until we reached an old cabin. My head was pounding, and I felt physically sick. My aunt gasped, and when I looked over, there was a weird deer. It stood up on its hind legs and looked malnourished. My aunt told me to look. At the beautiful deer. I started sobbing and telling her we had to go back home. The minute we got out of the woods, my head stopped hurting. A week after this, a bear lunged at me out of nowhere and disappeared, leaving me with just a scrapped knee. 3. I went to pick berries that were right outside the woods. It was about to storm, but I really wanted these yummy raspberries. A weird creature came out of the bushes. It was malnourished, and the sound that came out of it was unholy. It was human-like and had some dark, splotchy hair on its head. I ran faster than I ever thought I could. I remember sobbing and shaking. My little brother went outside to see what had spooked me so badly. He screamed and also ran inside. We ended up hiding in a closet with knives. All of these happened in my childhood. I'm almost 18 and had a dream. This ducking thing was in my dream. It didn't say a ducking thing, but you could feel its aura. I felt like I was unable to escape. I would run, but it would catch up and take a chunk of flesh off of me. I couldn't run. I couldn't hide. When I woke up, I was in intense pain and had to be calmed down by my cat. My cat was hissing at something unable to be seen. I don't know what I saw, and it's eating me alive. I live in the central Midwest of America, and before the quarantine, I'd had no such encounters with anything in my town. I was driving home around 10 p.m., and my neighborhood is surrounded by thick woods. I live about a block away from this thicket. I am around 100 feet from my house, and as I glance in my rearview mirror, I see a black figure almost like a living shadow, around 7 feet tall, 
with a human-looking body, inverted knees, and tall horns that resemble a goat sprouting from the head. It wasn't looking at me as it was crossing the street, but even as I write this, I'm getting the same chills on the back of my neck. I glance a second later, and it's gone, so I convince myself that it was my imagination. I have seen shadow people before, but none this large or with horns. At around 2 a.m. that night, I'm scrolling through Instagram in bed, my window is open, and I hear a low whistle. It is one note, only drawn out for about three seconds. This whistle repeats four times, and after it is done, I hear slow, heavy footsteps right underneath my window, second floor bedroom. I was paralyzed in fear for half an hour, so I did not look to see what it was. I'd like to think that my intuition is usually very good, and nighttime noises usually don't spook me. The next day I asked my family if they had heard the whistling, my brother says he has, his room is next to mine, but he thought it was me. Does anyone have any idea what I might have seen? Or do you know of anything that whistles at night? I don't know where else to ask. Skinwalker Range I learned how to shoot a firearm at a relatively early age. I was around 10 when my dad took me out back with an air rifle and showed me how to handle firearms. I was around 13 when he first took me to shoot a real gun. It was an old one. 22 lever action, but for a 13 year old, it may as well have been A.50 California. We went to a little gun range way out in the forest, about an hour away from where I live in Florida. It's a private range with a 200 yard firing line and a couple areas for shotguns and bows. My dad gets in for free because he knows the owner or something. I never asked. We went on a Monday morning and were the only ones there. It was pretty cool to be able to shoot at my own pace and not have to worry about other people. The interesting event started when my dad showed me how a shotgun works. He gave me a little. 410 double barrel and took me to the shotgun side of the range. With the exception of the dirt road leading to the parking lot, we were totally surrounded by trees. Thick trees. A man would have a hard time walking through them without making a path. He gave me the unloaded firearm and told me to keep it pointing in a safe direction while he went back to the truck to get targets. I was standing there, staring into the woods, when I thought I saw a deer. Now, keep in mind that I was 13. I had never seen a deer in person before. The animal I saw looked like what a blind person would draw based on your description of what a deer looks like, except on its hind legs. In other words, ducked up. It looked corrupted. That's the best way to describe it. And it stared right at me. When I heard my dad come back, I looked back at him and told him I saw a deer, but when I looked at the trees again, it was gone. I didn't think anything of it. I was young, and I just thought it was a weird breed of native fauna. We shot some clay and went on with our business. When we left, we went down a dirt road and took a right to get to the highway. We passed by an old road sign that had been shot up by people being retards driving to or from the gun range. I don't condone shooting at stuff from a moving vehicle, especially road signs, but people do it a lot out there. When we passed, I had this urge to look right, where the sign was. The deer was standing in this little clearing on the side of the road behind the sign. What happens next, I can't explain. I turned around and looked out the back window of my dad's truck, and I saw it walk with a very long stride towards us. We were going about 30 miles per hour, and it appeared as if it was gaining on us. The way it walked is best described as the way an enderman in Minecraft runs at you after you look at it. Nerdy way of explaining it, but that's just what it looked like. It had long, lanky limbs and a small body, just like a slender man, and looked just as corrupted as the last time. I don't know why I kept staring at it, but I couldn't look away for some reason. I gathered the strength to finally look away to tell my dad to look behind us, but when we both looked back, it was gone. I'm 21 now, I went to a friend of my dad's who happens to be around three quarters Native American. I'm unsure of what tribe, but I just know he's mostly Native. He does a lot of woodworking, and I wanted his help with a project I was doing. I don't know why I remembered that day when I stepped foot into his garage or workshop, but after we shot the shit for a while, I got up the courage to play dumb and tell him what I saw to get his opinion. He said it was a skinwalker. When he lived out west as a boy, we were told how to handle them by his elders. He offered me a blessing, and I reluctantly took it despite being an atheist myself, as I have zero logical explanation as to what I saw. I still go to that range. I can't beat it for the price. I still look at that old, shot up highway sign and remember what I saw. I don't have an answer as to why a creature predominantly found in the south would be found in the swamps of Florida or how it got there. I don't even know if it was what the experts say it is. All I know is that it still haunts the back of my mind every time I go shooting. My grandparents own a large plot of land in central Missouri, and they have owned that land for around 40 years. I have been to that farm over 10 times, and every time I go, 
I always get this terrifying feeling that something is watching me, like there's always something behind my back. I have also had many strange encounters there that are downright bizarre. My first encounter with whatever the hell this thing was was when I was around the age of 7 to 9, I am currently 14. We had brought our dog named Spot to that farm, he was a silver lab who I love dearly. I was exploring in the forest behind the house, just enjoying the summer breeze, when my dog started growling. A deep, sinister growl that I have never heard him make. I turned around quickly to see what he was growling at, but I could see nothing but forests along the way. While my eyes were scanning the area where my dog was growling, some animal shot out of the brush so fast I could barely see what it was, and before I knew it, it was gone. I sat there for what felt like an eternity, absolutely flabbergasted by what I had just witnessed. From what I could see of it, it looked like a coyote, but the speed at which it moved was absolutely insane. I moved at like 90 miles an hour and made almost no noise. But the most creepy part was that the place it jumped out of didn't even leave an imprint of where it was lying, and from where I viewed it jumping up, I should have been able to easily see where it was hiding. Shocked by what I witnessed, I just decided that was enough and went back inside the house. My second encounter happened when I was around 10. I was visiting the place, and like usual, I was getting the feeling I was being watched. That first day was normal, and nothing really creepy happened, I was just spending quality time with family. But when night came, that's when SHT started happening. I was trying to sleep in the twin bed that was shared by my mom's brother when he used to live there. When I heard tapping, not tiny little taps but loud taps almost like banging, it was coming from the direction of the window. I slowly sat up and looked out the window, but there was nothing, so I assumed it was just some animal or something like that. Five minutes passed and there was no tapping, and I was drifting off to sleep when boom. This time it was not a tap, a slam, or a loud slam directly into the window. I'm not talking about a hit, it sounded as if something absolutely massive had hit the window. I shot up so quickly that I nearly passed out. I decided enough was enough and grabbed a flashlight in the drawer and shined it out the window. 10 seconds passed, nothing. I was about to go crawl into my mom's bed when I heard a screech. A screech that was not achievable by any human. So loud it pierced the quiet, peaceful summer night. I can't put into words what that sound sounded like, but it was dark and horrible, and I still remember it to this day. I froze. Unable to move my muscles, I was so scared. I was sitting there still as a statue, petrified by what I heard. That's when my instincts kicked in, and they told me to run into my mom's room, which I did. For some reason, I didn't wake her up, I just cuddled up next to her and didn't sleep the entire night. All I could think of was that sound, that horrid, terrible, bloody screech. My next encounter was when I was around the age of 13. I was back at my grandparents, just enjoying my time like I usually do, when my grandpa suggested that we go watch. I agreed because I had been doing this for as long as I could remember, it was never an issue, and it was extremely fun. So we took the Polaris, and when we got there, it was around 6 to 7 p.m. to look for her. We decided to go into the most eastern pasture because that's usually where we spotted the most deer. 30 minutes passed, and we had seen a few deer, but not as much as we usually do, but then this is where the shit begins. I get that feeling again, that dreadful feeling that something is there, in the shadows, watching me. But this time it's a lot more intense, like it's right up behind me, but when I look, it's never there. But this time, it appears that my grandpa feels the same presence as me too. Just to let all of you know, my grandpa is a very laid-back individual, always joking and having a laugh. The only time I've seen him be very serious is when my great-uncle died a couple of years ago. So when I start feeling that I'm being watched, my grandpa goes from a happy and laid-back expression to a very serious and alert expression. He gripped the wheel so tight that his knuckles turned white and was constantly looking around, like to make sure something wasn't following us. He then made a massive U-turn out of nowhere and started heading back to the house. I asked him, what are you doing? And he replied, we're heading back to the house. The tone of his voice was cold, like he had witnessed someone being murdered. At this point, he was gripping the wheel even harder and was absolutely going pedal to the metal at full speed back to the house. I decided not to ask any questions until we got back to the house, which we did in no time at all. Once we were there, he rushed me into the house, constantly checking his back to make sure something wasn't there. When we were inside, he closed and locked the door tightly. His behavior was very alarming, and it really shocked me to my core. I decided that all of the stuff I had witnessed was enough and only asked him one question, what the hell is going on here? When I said that, he looked at me, gave me a cold expression, and said, I have some things I need to explain to you. We then sat down for 30 minutes, and he explained that whatever this thing that was living on his property has been here since the day he moved in, 
and he and my mother experienced the same thing that was happening to me the first few years of living here. He explained that he has seen whatever this thing is and that it doesn't like new visitors, hence why I was experiencing all of these problems. He told me about all of the things that he had witnessed and experienced, and they seemed to have been pretty similar to what was happening to me. He told me that he knew this was going to happen to me and that we were always watching to make sure I never got hurt because he knew this creature better than anyone else. We talked some more, but all of it was the same. It was now late, and he decided that I couldn't sleep alone, so he had me sleep with my mom. We luckily promptly left the next morning. I have not been back since that day. I'd quit the hell this thing is, but something tells me if I go back, good things will not come. So about a year and a half ago, my girlfriend and I went down to Ohio State Park. We frequent there as we live an hour away, and it's one of the best parks within a day's reach for us to hike, swim, mushroom hunt, and explore in general. So one day we got bored of the normal hiking areas and places we've been, so we decided to drive around the back roads deeper into the woods of the park. No map just deciding which way to turn when we got to intersections and going from there, we passed a random old cemetery that I remember, and it couldn't have been a mile or more down the road when we noticed a more dirt slash dilapidated road with a chain in front of it so cars couldn't go into it, so we decided to park the car and go explore that trail and area in general, there were no signs for. No trespassing reports or anything like that, so we continued on. I'll never forget the eerie feeling I had as soon as we made it onto the trail or road, just a general sense of you shouldn't be here, but I don't listen. My girlfriend seems intrigued, there's no one around at all, and it seems like a beautiful, secluded area, so we head back some more, and we noticed up a cut off an abandoned visitor center, so obviously we had to go check it out. So this is where things start to get really creepy. About 100 feet away from walking up to the building, that alarm in my head that's going you shouldn't be here has intensified immensely, but I was curious about the building still. My girlfriend at this time is freaking out internally, she wants to leave as she feels uneasy and unwelcome to where we are as well. I want to explore the building because I love abandoned places. In that moment of walking up, I realized the woods had gone silent. I don't hear bugs buzzing around anymore, no chirps from the birds, not even ducking branches swaying in the wind. We get up to the building, and my girlfriend is pleading that we go back. I said, let's just take a step in, and we can go. I'm approaching the stairs to the door from the left side, and no joke straight out of a cheesy horror movie, a bird out of nowhere flies into the window of the building, and not five seconds later I heard what sounded like either a log or very large branch cracking on the other side of the building, and I'd like to clarify that there was no way it was a small branch or twig, it sounded almost like a tree breaking directly on the other side of the building. I pulled my pistol out and walked quickly backwards, facing the building, and told my girlfriend to walk as quickly and quietly as possible back to the car. We hopped in and left as quickly as the car would go into drive, so for my question about this whole mini story, here's some facts about the area and stuff in general. Natives did used to live in this area way back when. Black bears do reportedly live in the area, though you don't see them too often, and I've never seen one there. But, like I said, it's a possibility. The second possibility that came to mind was another human, but the thing that broke did not sound like a human walking over a branch and breaking it, and so what made me think of this time was that I've recently gotten into Appalachian folklore and stories and read about Wendigos, SW, crawlers, and such. So for my question, has anyone had any similar experiences in Pennsylvania or in general, and if so, what else happened or what do you think it could have been? It's been on my mind the past week after reading about those creatures, and the only real correlation I can make is the woods going still and that feeling of dread. The Beast of Bladenboro refers to a creature responsible for a string of deaths amongst Bladenboro, North Carolina, animals in the winter of 1953-54. According to witnesses and trackers, it was ultimately not definitively identified. According to reports, the animal commonly crushed or decapitated its victims, which were mostly dogs. Then death began. The first animal deaths possibly related to the Beast of Bladenboro were reported on December 29, 1953. Witnesses described a creature that was sleek, black, and about 5 feet long, which killed a dog in Clarkton, North Carolina, approximately 8 miles from Bladenboro. On December 31, 1953, Two dogs belonging to a resident of Bladenboro were found dead with a significant amount of blood near their kennels. Their owner reported that the dogs were torn into ribbons and crushed. One resident was quoted as saying, My dogs put up a good fight. There was blood all over the porch, big puddles of it. And there was a pool of saliva on the porch. It killed one dog at 10.30 and left it lying there. My dad wrapped the dog up in a blanket. That thing came back and got that dog, and nobody's seen the dog since. At 1.30 in the morning, it came back, killed the other dog, 
and took it off. We found it three days later in a hedgerow. The top of one of the dog's heads was torn off, and its body was crushed and wet, like it had been in that thing's mouth. The other dog's lower jaw was torn off. The following day, on January 1, 1954, two more dogs were found dead at a Bladenboro farm, and on the night of January 2, 1954, a farmer reported that a dog of his had been killed. Two more dogs were found dead on January 3, 1954. An autopsy was performed on one of the dogs, and it was reported that there weren't more than two or three drops of blood in him. The victim's bottom lip had been broken open, and his jawbone had been smashed back. Further deaths were reported in the subsequent days. On the night of January 5, 1954, a pet rabbit was found cleanly decapitated and still warm, and on January 7, a dead dog was found in a pasture near the Bladenboro Swamp. A goat was also reported to have died with its head flattened. Encounters One local described the animal as about four and a half feet long, bushy, and resembling either a bear or a panther, while another person described it as small and noted that there was a little one just like it running beside it. Another local described hearing a strange noise. Though he did not see the animal, he estimated it was close to 150 pounds the way it went through the bushes. Another account detailed in a local newspaper contained the following physical description. It was about 20 inches high. It had a long tail, about 14 inches. The color of it was dark. It had a face exactly like a cat. I haven't ever seen a cat that big. It was walking around stealthy, sneaky. A group of hunters from Wilmington spent that night tracking the creature for three miles around Swampland. According to them, the tracks showed claws at least an inch long and indicated an 80 to 90 pound animal. The beast's circling movement suggested it might have had offspring or a mate nearby, the hunters said. On January 5th, the beast was witnessed attacking a dog, which ran away and was not found. Tracks were seen along a creek bank near one of the attack sites, there were two sets of prints, and one was smaller. Later that day, in the early evening, another resident described a big mountain lion near some dogs three houses down. The creature ran toward her but turned and fled when she screamed. Outside her home, the tracks left on the dirt road were bigger than a silver dollar, according to police chief Fours. A young boy named Dalton Norton reported seeing what he called a big cat on January 6, which made a noise like a baby crying on his porch before leaving. On January 11, two cars stopped for an animal reported to be four feet long. One of the men in the cars was quoted as saying the animal had runny-looking ears and was brownish and tabby. Hunting the Beast Luther Davis and Mayor Woodrow Fussell next to the Bobcat Davis trapped on the night of January 3rd, Police Chief Roy Force searched for the creature with his dogs, but they reportedly would not follow the trail. 9. A half-dozen brave youths and their dogs then spent January 4th searching for the creature, while that night, Fours and 8 to 10 other officers conducted their own hunt. Hunters who traveled to Bladenboro from Wilmington also searched for the beast that evening, reportedly tracking it for three miles around the swamp. On the night of January 5th, more than 500 people and dogs hunted through the woods and swamps for the creature. On January 6, more than 800 people turned out to hunt for the beast in the swamps. Fours planned to tie up dogs as bait to lure the creature out, but this plan was not put into action. The hunt itself was also ended by officials due to safety concerns. On January 7, another 800 to 1,000 people gathered to hunt the creature. During the evening of the 8th, Four fraternity brothers from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill were the only reported hunters. Mayor Fussell officially called off the hunt unless the creature made another obvious kill or there was a legitimate sighting. The armed hunting parties of previous nights had become too large for safety, and Fours received a telegram from a humane society in Asheville, North Carolina, protesting his plan to stake out dogs as bait for the creature. On January 13, Luther Davis, a local farmer, found a bobcat struggling with a steel trap in Big Swamp four miles from the city, and shot it in the head. Woodrow Fussell, the mayor of Bladenboro, told newspapers that the beast of Bladenboro had been found and killed. However, it has been questioned whether such a small cat could have killed and mangled the dogs. On the same day, Bruce Souls from Tabor City was leaving Bladenboro when he hit a cat with his vehicle. According to reports, it was spotted like a leopard, about 20 to 24 inches high, and weighed between 75 and 90 pounds. He took the cat home with him to Tabor City. Yet a third man, professional hunter and guide Barry Lewis, is credited in some newspapers as having killed the animal. There were conflicting reports about whether it was Davis's or Lewis's cat that Mayor Fussell photographed and sent out to the press. Lewis was reportedly hunting in a different part of Bladen County when he shot and killed his bobcat. Many reported accounts describe the beast of Bladenboro as feline but do not agree on any one species.
The animal has been described as resembling either a bear or a panther. Wilmington hunter S. W. Garrett also claimed to have heard the creature scream while hunting and likened it to that of a panther. Harry Davis, curator at the Raleigh State Museum, has said that a panther never occurs in this country and was of the opinion that it might have actually been a coyote. One local resident claimed the beast had tracks like those of a dog but also said, I've never seen a dog that large. Chief Fours was also reported as believing the beast to be a wolf. He said that old folks say they remember seeing wolves in the Bay Swamp area and talk about them every now and then. C.E. Kinlaw described the creature as looking like a big mountain lion when it charged her on January 5th. The game warden of Elizabeth City, North Carolina, Sam Culberth, said that the tracks he investigated indicated a catamount, another name for a mountain lion. Other people described the animal as likely being a wolverine, while others speculated that the creature may have been a wild police dog. This happened to me about 11 years ago, when I was walking home from a friend's house at night. I'll just get straight into it. I used to live in a rural part of the UK and have lived in rural areas most of my life, so I was used to long walks, occasionally at night, especially before I could drive. They never bothered me too much, I'd get creeped out occasionally, but this one night was the most terrifying experience I ever had. There was this one friend who used to live roughly three miles away from my house. He had cool parents, and my other friends and I would often go over to his house and play video games and hang out. Occasionally, this meant walking home at night if I stayed late. The woods were dark, however, combined with the lack of ambient light due to living in a rural area, you had absolute abyssal darkness. Luckily, most of the time I had my phone light to walk with, but sometimes my phone would die or the battery would be so low that the flash wouldn't work and I'd have to use my screen light. I remember my friends and I having just finished watching a film. It was nearing 10 p.m., so we all left my friend's house and headed our separate ways home. I contemplated briefly which way I should go and decided to take the shortcut through the woods. I started walking away from his house and towards the path that headed into the woods. The streetlights dimmed as I entered the fields before the woods. I glanced at my phone and saw my battery was really low, only enough power left for a couple of minutes of flash, and then I'd have to use my screen for light. That wouldn't last the whole way, either. As I saw the tree line approaching, I switched on the flash and followed the well-trodden path into the dark. To my dismay, my light died within seconds of entering, and I flipped my phone over to try and shine the way using the screen. As I walked, I looked out for all of the familiar landmarks I was used to seeing to ensure I was heading in the right direction. A funky tree stump, check, a half-fallen fir tree, check, and an enormous puddle I had to jump over, check. All was going well. I was halfway through the woods when my phone completely died. I remember the moment it happened, I was engulfed in darkness. I'm not sure if you've experienced this level of darkness before, but it was so dark that I couldn't even see the outline of my hand centimeters in front of my face. Naturally, my pace slowed considerably, and I started holding my hand out in front of me to make sure I wasn't going to walk into a tree or something. I continued walking for another minute or so, until all of a sudden, a pungent smell hit me. Cigarette smoke. I glanced around but couldn't see anything. Then I heard it, a cough. I wasn't alone. Thoughts raced through my head. Who would be out in the woods in the dark? Are they following me? Am I lost? I quickened my pace again, throwing a little caution to the wind. I carried on walking and tripped slightly on a branch. As I regained my balance, I heard another sound. Branches breaking underfoot, what sounded like right behind me. The snapping turned into fast footsteps that grew louder and louder. I started sprinting. I felt the well-trodden path turn to brush. I felt branches, logs, and plants hitting my legs. It wasn't long before I fell hard. I was lying on the floor, holding my knee. I could still hear branches snapping around me and a voice muttering something. I didn't dare move. Then, all of a sudden, they turned on a torch. I couldn't see anything except for the beam of light, which seemed to be eaten quickly by the darkness of the forest. I lay motionless on the ground as the beam swept through the trees. I could still hear the person mumbling with a deep growl. The crunching of footfalls grew and grew. They were only several feet from me by this point. I couldn't breath. The light went out, the snapping of branches grew, and then. Nothing. Quiet. My eyes were wide open but I couldn't see anything. Then I could hear wheezing. Right. Above. Me. I wanted to cry. I wasn't sure if the person could see me or not. They could have been staring right at me, and I wouldn't know. This carried on for about five minutes, until the crunching of leaves and snapping of twigs started up again and got fainter and fainter as they moved away from me. I remained lying down for another five or ten minutes, contemplating my escape. Like an idiot, 
I'd run off the path and wasn't sure which way was back to it or was home. I didn't really care, I thought I was going to walk in one direction until I left the woods and got home from there. I knew that as soon as I started moving again, if the person was still in the woods, they would hear me. Should I run or try to sneak out? I opted for the latter. I slowly rose to my feet, listening constantly to my surroundings, picked a direction, and started walking. I wasn't perfectly quiet, but quiet enough to be sure I wouldn't be heard from too far away. I kept hearing snapping sounds and rustling in the distance, and every time I froze, I'd hold my breath until I was happy no one was there and then start walking again. I repeated this pattern for what felt like an eternity until eventually I found the path. I screamed for joy in my mind and sped up my pace. After another 10 minutes, I saw it. Light. Street lights are filtering in through the trees. I'd never been so happy to see a meager street lamp. But as I progressed to the end of the woods, my heart sank. At the end of the path, there was a black silhouette. Unmoving, contrasted against the light background, was the dark figure of a man. What should I do? Maybe it's a different person. Perhaps it's someone walking their dog. I froze and watched them silently, but they didn't move. At all. They just stood there, like they were guarding the entrance to the woods. I didn't know what to do. By this point, I'd had enough. I was so close to getting out that I decided to just run straight towards the exit, straight towards them. I was a six feet young man, if they wanted to stop me, they'd have a hard job of it, I thought. So that's what I did. I started sprinting. The figure grew and grew, and as I reached them, I stepped to the side. I heard someone growl duck loudly and felt something clip the back of my head and tug the back of my jacket. I cleared the sheep gate in one leap and sprinted into the light. I eventually stopped running when I could see the first house and looked back. The entrance to the woods was quite far away now, and I couldn't see anyone standing by the entrance. Relaxing a bit more now, I finished my walk home. That's pretty much it. I know I could have overreacted. It could have been someone out for a walk in the woods, a dog walker, or a camper. But what I thought was strange was that they didn't use their torch except briefly on one occasion. Once they heard me, they also actively sought me out. Who knows what would have happened if they caught me. In any case, I never walked that way home alone again, not at night anyway.